Hi there and welcome to Lorena's Labyrinth. My name's Anna Pirelli. The comments that you see here are my views, beliefs, opinions, and sometimes they are not even my fully formed views, beliefs, and opinions. However, they are my understandings. Please do retain an open mind and reflect on any of the content and your comfort levels. If your views differ, please feel free to leave a comment. Also remember, it is possible to disagree in respectful ways. My way is not necessarily your way and vice versa. You might also find that some of the content on this playlist um, in regard to spiritual or universal laws, it resonates with you, meaning it feels right to you, while other laws may not feel right or they may not feel comfortable. If this is the case, the information is either not right for you or it is not right for you right now, and it might never be right for you at any given time. It really doesn't matter. As an earthy and practical person, I can put my hand up with all honesty and say that I have at different times had the same feelings about some of the content in here. And with some of them, I still have a level of scepticism uh, within my viewpoints, but I choose to retain an open mind about the things that I don't fully understand for a few reasons. Firstly, because I believe it would be supreme arrogance to think that we all know all of the answers while we have a body. Um, and because what is right for one of us is not necessarily right or suitable for all of us and I choose to respect the differences. Please do leave your uh, opinions, beliefs, uh, feel free to argue the points in a respectful way um, with any of the content on the slides and even my interpretations and if you feel that you can add clarity around some of the content we would all love to see it. Thank you. For now though let's explore the laws. All creation is governed by law. The principles that operate in the outer universe, discoverable by scientists, are called natural laws. But there are subtler laws that rule the hidden spiritual planes and the inner realm of consciousness. Contained within these laws, or conditions, is the true nature of matter. Knowledge of these laws has an effect upon the mental urges. Mind is the builder. Stay in full mindfulness of the application of universal law as related to self and to others, and know that in love all life is given, in love all things move. In giving one attains, in giving one acquires, in giving, love becomes the fulfillment of desire, guided and directed in the ways that bring the more perfect knowledge of self as related to the universal, all-powerful, all-guiding all divine influence in life. Love is life. When we go back, merge with the God Source, in some infinitesimal but profound way, we expand the mind of God. Our higher self always points the best and most perfect way and it is ours to listen and choose or reject what we hear. It does not blame, but patiently tries again to show the perfect way, the loving way. All of creation pushes forth. We are ever becoming. Identity ever remains. Universal Law 103. The Law of Vibration. One of the seven laws of our solar system, under the three major laws. This is the basis of manifestation, starting on the first plane, the beginning of the work of the Logos. This is the atomic law of the system. In the same sense that on each of our planes, the first subplane is the atomic plane. Nothing rests. Everything moves. Everything vibrates. This is the law of progress, of movement, and of rotation. This principle explains that the differences between manifestations of matter, energy, mind, and spirit result largely from varying rates in vibration. All that exists is in constant vibration and motion. Atoms always vibrate with such great rapidity that they seem motionless to the physical eye. At the other end of the scale are things that vibrate so slowly that they also appear to be motionless or non-existent. In between are the various vibrations of living entities which range from consciousness all the way down to the lowly dust particle that plays an important role in the food chain. Still there are things even lower than dust. If we were to follow the scale of life all the way down to the utmost regions of the negative pole, 
undifferentiated matter. We again would find ourselves in the realm of spirit, the Alpha, and the Omega. All that is, begins in spirit, and ends in spirit, completing a single cycle of evolution that will be repeated countless numbers of times through eternity. If this is your first visit to the channel and the first law that you've looked at, well, we've spoken about vibration um, multiple times throughout the discussions on universal law, that everything has an atomic structure, that everything, um, be it our souls, be it spirit, be it thoughts, everything has got a vibration attached to it. So this is not um, a new subject content for us. All it's talking about is the fact that this is a major law that oversees the progress of movement of everything. It is the everything, you may as well say. It explains, in the law, it explains that the different there are differences between manifestations of matter, energy, mind, spirit, and it's all about how fast that the atoms are vibrating together. Now, of course, these vibrations are not visible to the naked eye, of course. Um, even if we look at the physical body, the, the physical body is made up of atoms. This makes sense, I guess, to some extent to explain what we mean by vibration of matter. With the physical body, we can't see the cellular structure unless we put it under a microscope, you know, and then we might see the cells moving around if we've got the right equipment. So when it comes to things like um, the soul's vibrational movement, we haven't developed the technology to be able to look at this movement and establish the vibration. It's not there yet. So this is where faith comes in and belief. But this law is explaining that there is vibration and movement through everything, um, through the consciousness down to the, the lowly dust particle that they refer to. Everything plays a part in life. Um, even when we think that it doesn't, it has... Um, purpose and meaning attached to it and so I do understand what it says or what it's meaning when it says if we'd follow the scale of life all the way down um, even to what we consider to be meaningless matter you know like the dust particle it, you know it would be like well what point does dust or what purpose does dust have well you bring enough dust together and you end up with dirt I guess and then what can we make from dirt goodness me we can make a whole heap of things you know um, but then, of course, the law speaks about the Alpha and the Omega. So within the context of this law, I'm going to talk about the Alpha and the Omega because um, this is symbolic and it just reiterates what we know about vibration, consciousness and eternal life anyway. It's um, a reference point. So. If you've done any research at all, you'll know that the Alpha and the Omega are the first and last letters of the alphabet. It's the equivalent of saying, if we're English speakers, it's the A and the Z. It's the beginning and it is the end of the alphabet. And this is all it simply means. And I guess at the time that um, they were having these dialogues, because apparently the first time it was written and recorded was actually, and I could be wrong, you're welcome to correct me, is in the Bible, uh, I think with the book of Revelations or whatever, where they make reference to um, Christ channeling God and saying that where God is saying that he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning, the creator of all things, and he is the end as well of everything. So everything starts and stops with the creator through the process of creation. I put the symbols up here of the uh, letters because um, they're on the top left hand corner because that's what the symbols actually look like. And then I put the, them with this other symbol because that I believe has been adopted by Christian churches. I'm not sure how many of them or all of them, uh, potentially just the Catholic Church, I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, it's been brought into their faith as part of this symbolism of um, life and death I guess and the eternal part of life uh, what else can I say about this just that I guess from um, a new age perspective if you like since the 
1850s, it might be a case of this is where the saying, the I am comes in. I am that I am, the great I am. All of this probably comes from this, um, this reference to the Alpha and the Omega. But of course, look, please do write your own comments and thoughts and beliefs up. I'm very interested as always to hear other people's thoughts and opinions. Um, for now though, I'm just going to leave this one with you and wait and see what happens. Wait and see if anybody makes a comment. Until then, take care my friends. Have a beautiful day. Thanks for being part of my journey. Bye-bye for now.